This is Archimedes' Principle Part 1b. It picks up where Archimedes' Principle 1a left off. Okay? Now, we're going to take it a step further. This is where Archimedes' Principle gets really interesting. Instead of having the water level go up this time, as we lower that 5 kilogram weight into it, we're going to have it go out a spout, a little overflow spout, into another container, and we're going to weigh the liquid that gets displaced. Okay? And let's see if you can see the connection that Archimedes discovered. Uh, this is really the crux of Archimedes' principle right here. Okay? So watch carefully. Okay, there it is. It's losing its weight. Notice what happened. The water that flowed over onto the right-hand bucket there weighed about 1.2 kilograms. Look at how much weight was apparently lost by the object. It went from 5 down to about 3.8, about 1.2 kilograms as well. There it is, in a nutshell. The weight lost by an object submerged in a fluid will always equal the weight of the fluid that is being displaced. Archimedes' principle, very far-reaching, has to do with buoyancy, density, volumes, it's all about this. The weight lost by an object submerged in a fluid will always equal the weight of the fluid that is being displaced. Okay, now that was a fairly large object there, five kilograms. Okay, we're going to redo this now using five kilograms of a much denser material, namely gold. One thing you should notice right off the bat, five kilograms of gold is a much smaller volume than that previous block. Because gold's so dense, five kilograms doesn't take up much room. Let's see what happens when we lower this five kilograms of gold in there. Are you ready? Huh. It did lose weight, but not much. And why? Because <laughs> it didn't displace very much liquid. You see at the bottom there, very little. It displaced about maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kilograms of water. And guess what? That's precisely how much weight it appeared to lose. So that five kilogram gold bar would not really feel that much lighter if you were trying to pick it up in water. Okay? Because it's so much denser than the water. Now we're going to replace that 5 kilogram gold bar with a 5 kilogram chunk of polystyrene, which is just a little bit more dense. It's about 1.09 grams per milliliter. Water is 1. Polystyrene, 1.09. So let's see what happens when we take a large 5 kilogram object. Large because it's so low density. Okay? You probably are predicting what's going to happen here, but it should make sense. Look at that. That 5 kilogram goes down to almost nothing. It's about maybe 0.2 kilograms. It lost 4.8. Why? Because it displaced 4.8 kilograms of water. You can see that on the right. So this thing is almost weightless. You've picked up things like that in water that are heavy outside of water, but in water, picking up a person. A person has almost the same density as water. It's easy to pick some out up in the pool. You can carry them around easily. Why? Because that buoyant force is so substantial because their density is so close to that of water. Okay? So, that's all been for things that sink. What about for things that float? So, here is a 5 kilogram object. This time it's less dense. This is polyethylene. Its density is about 0.93, so that's less dense than water. Okay? Now watch what happens as this gets lowered. Okay? Less dense than the water that I'm lowering into. couple things you notice. It lost all of its weight. Of course it is floating. In fact, look at the line there. It's slack. Okay? There's no tension in that line because the thing is just floating there. It displaced a full five kilograms of water. So these are two corollaries you can associate with Archimedes' principle. The first one you already knew. It's applied to all the ones that sank. A sunken object will always displace its volumes worth of fluid. So the little chunk of gold displaced a little volume of fluid. Um, larger object still displaced its volume's worth. That's true for objects that are sunk. A floating object will always displace its weight's worth of fluid. And that's what's happening here. This object's floating. It's not displacing its volume's worth because a part of its volume is still above the water level. So floating objects do not displace their volume's worth, but they do displace their weight's worth of fluid. So, back to Archimedes and the puzzle he had. What caused him to run out in the street screaming, Eureka, I've discovered it. Well, 
This is rather ingenious. Imagine he took a gold bar and the gold crown, okay, that the king had given him, um, given to the goldsmith, and he suspended them from a lever. And levers were another thing that Archimedes spent a lot of time studying and figuring out the principles to. So he, hang, he hung it like that, and it's, uh, it's even, because they were the same mass, and that wasn't the issue. The question is whether they're the same volume. You might think, why don't you just drop those each in a separate container of water and see which one makes the water level go up? Well, if you had a container large enough to hold that big gold crown, you would not see the water level go up very much at all. Okay, It would just be too big around. The water level would change only a small amount. It wouldn't be enough to really tell the difference between the gold bar and the gold crown. But this uses Archimedes' principle of buoyancy. Check this out. We're going to take this, this, this nice, even balance beam here that has the gold brick on one side and the gold crown on the other and lower it into a tub of water. Okay. If when it's lowered it stays level across like that, you know they must have the same buoyant force. The only way they could have the same buoyant force is they have the exact same volume. So if that were the case, the king would have, would have been wrong, the goldsmith would have been honest, and uh, the crown would have been made of the pure gold he was given. That's not what happened. Yeah, this is what happened. When it got lowered into the tub of water, the crown side went up. They weighed the same out of water, but in water, the crown's slightly greater volume, because what, the goldsmith had taken out some of the gold and stuck in some less dense metal, um, made it more buoyant. So that side went up, and the blacksmith was beheaded as a result of that. At least that's how the story goes. So. What's Archimedes' principle point out? <laughs> Lots of things, yes. Unfortunately, you weigh a little bit more than you think you do, that there's a buoyant force acting upward on you right now. But that should be kind of uh, uplifting for you to know that. Um, you could consider yourself enlightened. Ha. So anyway, we're going to now go, and the secondary uh, part of this lesson is going to involve Archimedes' principle problems, solving problems involving Archimedes' principle.